Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial. And in our ongoing look at learning Avid's Media Composer and Symphony, we're going to take a look at part two of our look at Avid's title tool. And in this tutorial, we're going to cover a lot of ground. We're going to talk about letting and kerning. We're going to talk about how to create some shapes inside of the title tool. We're even going to get in and show you how to save out some style sheets to really speed up your workflow. And last but certainly not least, I'm going to show you how you can animate a pretty complex title creation very quickly and very easily using obviously the title tool and just the basic effects that come standard when you apply that title in your timeline. Okay, short introduction, let's just get into Symphony and let's get started. Okay, now you'll remember from part one, we got in and we saved this very basic title into our timeline. What I'm going to do, again, much like I said in part one, we're simply going to right click and I'm going to come up to edit title. Now, a couple other very basic things that I do want to mention about the title tool here is I'm just going to say no because I do not want to update this title to marquee. I'm going to come in, I'm going to choose the selection tool. I'm going to simply select our text and I'm going to set my shadow depth to be zero. Uh, a couple other things I do want to mention before we go on. Obviously, we do have controls over kerning and of letting. Getting in and adjusting those is very easy. We can come in to our kerning dropdown and we can choose if we want it to be loose, normal, or tight. And I can simply get in and punch in a numeric value for the kerning. Let's just say 10 and hit enter. You'll see everything spaces out. And if I happen to have multiple lines here, we'll just select BMX and I'll hit control and C on Windows Command and C on the Mac to copy that. I'm just going to paste it down to the next couple lines. If we obviously want to get in and adjust the leading, remember that's leading, not leading, we can do that right here by simply coming over to lead. I'm just going to punch in a value of, oh, I don't know, maybe minus 15. And you can see this is how we can get in and adjust this to get it exactly the way that we want. Maybe I'll put it at minus 25. That's looking pretty good. Now what we also have the ability to do here, I'm just going to double click on my text here, I'm just going to go back to just one line of BMXing, is in some cases, depending on the font that you're using, you might want to get in and adjust the actual space in between a, a specific letter. So let's just say I'm not happy with the space between the M and the X, and I want to tighten this up a little bit. What I'm going to do is I'm simply going to hold Alt on Windows Option on the Mac, and I'm going to use the left and right arrow keys to pull everything together, or on the flip side, to push it apart. You'll see, very simple. So again, Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac, and the left and right arrow keys to get in. And just fine tune the spacing in your text. Very nice. Okay, now, what I'm gonna do again, just space this out a little bit. I'm gonna come back to the selection tool. Maybe I'll add a drop shadow here, just so it's a bit easier to see. And we're just going to make sure here that I punch in a numeric value here. There we go. Perfect. Probably a little bit more here, maybe four. Just easier to see. Very nice. Okay. Now, let's talk about creating some basic shapes inside of the title tool. Now, what I'm going to do is just create a very standard box around my text. But the thing is, is that right now I need to create an actual screen where I'm just going to have some text, you know, positioned on the screen. I don't want to have a background. I just want to have a solid color as the background. Now, most people think you're going to need to get in and start importing elements. You don't need to do any of that. We actually have the ability to turn the video see-through off. Because remember, all this basically is, is just a matte key or an alpha channel that's going to be able to be seen through to see our image in the background. But I can actually turn that off right down here by toggling the video background on or off. In this case, the color set to black. But I could set that to be whatever color I wanted. If I wanted it to be, oh, I don't know, sort of a purpley color, there we go. If I want it to be more of sort of a darker yellow color, I could do that as well. Now in this case, I think I'll just leave it on as video. Because like I said, I want to create a basic shape. And we can actually do that with our shape tools located right here. So what I'm going to do is just simply select the rectangle tool, and I'm just going to draw a rectangle right here oh, over top of BMXing. Well, BMXing has now disappeared. Now, how do I get it back? Well, the first thing I need to do is get rid of that drop shadow, because that's not looking too nice. And I think what I'm going to do is adjust the fill color of this element. And I'm going to do that simply, again, by clicking on the fill color. 
maybe we'll select, I don't know, sort of a bluish color. That's looking very nice. And all I need to basically do is adjust this element's position in Z space. I basically just need to move it backwards a step. Well, we can actually do that by simply navigating up to the top. What I'm going to do is come over to Object, the Object drop down at the top, and you'll see that I can bring the object to the front, I can send it to the back, I can bring it forward one position, or send it backwards one position. Now, because there's only two elements here, I can say, just send the element backwards. And there we go. We now have our blue rectangle sitting behind our BMXing element. Now, if I wanted to get in, and let's say, you know, this, this is a little bit too hard for me, and let's say I wanted to get in and round this out. You might also hear this referred to as bullnosing. Bullnosing, because obviously the shape of a bull's nose is curved a little bit on the edges, we can do that by simply selecting our rectangle. I'm going to navigate right down here. We talked about this in part one, the box corner tool, and I'm simply going to round that out. And you can see now I've got a very cool element. Now, where would I use something like this? Well, let me show you. What I'm going to do is I'll just shrink this down to be about 48. And maybe we want it to have first place, second place, third place. So let's do that. First place, and this is way too spread out. So let's just adjust the kerning here. Very cool. And what we're going to do is we're going to stretch this out. We can adjust its size by just doing that. I'm just going to make sure that this is going to fit in. That's looking pretty good. So what we're going to do is just position this where we want it to go. So we got a first place here. I'm going to copy and paste it. We'll move that over here for second place. We'll copy and paste that for third place. And you can see that really creating elements inside of the title tool is very quick. We double click. We can now say second. Now, of course, I should have right justified these, but that's okay. And you can see I've now basically just created a first, second, and third place stack. What, in a matter of a minute inside of the title tool? Very quick to do, very simple. You don't need to go to a program like Photoshop to create something like this. It can all be done within the title tool. Now, that, of course, begs the question. And I'm going to throw this in here as a little bit of a bonus. What if I wanted to get in and animate each one of these separately? The problem is, is that when I save this out to my timeline, just like such, they are one element. So how do I get in and adjust that? Well, what most people do is they'll create a different title for each one of these elements. Yes, you can do that, but there's actually a faster way to get in and animate these three titles independently of each other. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to create two new layers, and I'm just going to select this clip here. We're just going to choose the next layer here. We're going to edit that in. I'm going to select this layer, make sure I got the duration, and edit it into the top here. So what I'm going to do is the top layer here is going to be first place, second layer appropriately enough, second place, third layer appropriately enough, third place. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to isolate the top layer. So I'm going to only going to look at the first place layer, then the second place layer, then the third place layer. And I do that by holding Control and Windows Command on the Mac. And I'm going to click right over here on top of my little monitor, and it's going to solo this track for me. Now, you'll remember this track, even though there's three of them, it still has each one of these elements on it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to step into Effects Mode. Shift and Y is my shortcut. Again, you can find Effects Mode right up here in the Composer window. Effects Mode right here, right over here on top of the timeline. Effects Mode right there. And what I can do is I can crop the bottom part of this up here to just isolate that title. Again, I'm going to hold Control, click on the layer below. I'm going to select the layer below. We're going to crop down from the top. We're going to crop up from the bottom. And you'll see that what I have basically done, again, same thing here on the bottom, is I've actually gone in and I've isolated. We'll just adjust the top crop here. We've now gone in and we've isolated each one of these elements independently of each other. So now I could take them and slide them in on their own. You'll see we've got bottom layer, third place, second place, first place, each one as their own separate element. And again, to animate them, we talked basically about keyframing. I can come in here to the first place layer. We'll add a keyframe. Maybe we'll come down, oh, I don't know, 20 frames. And all we're going to do is simply adjust its position. We're going to come right back over here to the effects editor, grab the horizontal position. We're just going to slide it out of frame like such. And what we can do again, do the same thing here. What I'm going to do, we'll just select this layer here. 
Again, this is a bit of a bonus here. Just showing you how to get in and create a very cool composite here. We'll just adjust the horizontal position again here. And again, same. I'm just going to jump down. Let's just make sure we had a keyframe there. Jump down. We also want to make sure we're looking at third place. Very nice. And we'll just position this off frame. And all I'm going to do now is basically just stagger these each 10 frames. Now you remember, first, second, and third. So we want first to come in, obviously first, second to come in next, and then third. And what I've basically created now is an animation that, let's see if it'll play back, first, second, third. Very cool. And of course at the end, we can have them all disappear at the same time. Or what I can do is get in and I can add a transition to fade each one of these elements out. We've got a little sidetracked. Okay, so let's do this. Let's get back into the title tool here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete both of these elements here. We'll take our BMX scene. Now remember, even though I've cropped it, that element is still first, second, and third. You know what we'll do here? We'll just drop it back in over top here. Just so we're back to where we started. Perfect. Again, right click. Edit title. There is a couple more things that I want to show you inside of the title tool here. We're not going to promote it. We'll just delete everything here. Except for that. Let's just undo what I just did here. Undo delete. There we go. Delete that. Perfect. And we'll just bump the size of this up here. We had it at 96. Because what I want to show you now is how we can get in and we can create some very funky looks and we can save all these looks out now. Now let's just say hypothetically this is the standard title that we want to use. I like the font, I like the size, I pretty much like everything about it. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to save this as a style. And to do that is actually very simple. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come right over here to the right to this little drop down where it says save style parameter menu. I'm going to click on it. And I'm simply going to say save as, and you're going to see now that I'm brought to the title style sheet. What this is basically saying to me is, okay, what parameters of this title do you want me to remember when I'm saving this style out? Do you want the font, the font size, the font style, the font justification, etc., 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 etc.? So let's say you only wanted the font, the size, the style, the justification, the kernel, and the letting. You could deselect everything else and it will only remember those elements there. But in this case, I'm going to have it save everything out. What I'm going to do is I'm simply going to call this standard title. What we're going to do is we're going to simply say done, and let's create something totally different. Let's create, you know what, we'll even pick a new font here. I'm just going to pick one at random. How about that one? Sure. What we're also going to do is we're going to pick a different color. I'm going to choose blue here. And I'm going to position it over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to adjust its kerning. Maybe we'll make it, I don't know, 30. Sure. And let's left justify this here. Very cool. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to call this, I don't know, new title number one. doesn't even matter what we call it. I'm going to say save as. We're again going to save everything. We'll call this new title number one. I'm going to say done. And now what's very cool is, is that let's just close the title tool. We're not going to save anything. I'm going to create a new title. Again, prompted, mark here title tool, we'll select title tool. Now you'll see that because I'm viewing the title that's already in my timeline, of course it's going to show it to me inside of the title tool. So what I'm going to do is just type in Kevin is awesome. And what I want to do is use that standard title layout that I just saved for this title. No problem. All I have to do is simply navigate over to styles and you'll see now that I have a visual representation of both of those styles. I can simply select the one that I want and double click on it and you'll see that I now have Kevin is awesome. All I have to do is basically just take the fact that I'm awesome and stretch it out across the screen here. And there's that title laid out exactly as I saved it before. Now, what I can also do is say, you know what, I'd rather have this style here, and you'll see as I bring the mouse over top of the style, it actually tells me what the style is called. So I can simply select it, and there we go. Now, the question is, where is this information being saved? Well, you'll remember the settings are really the core of everything inside a Media Composer. What I'm going to do is just slide the title tool over here. We'll come over to our settings. We're going to drag all the way down to the bottom, and you'll see that there's our title style right here. There's our new title number one, and there's our standard title. What does this mean? This means that you can now save out title styles 
and share them with other editors, whether they're working on the same computer as you, or you could send them to other editors around the world to create one uniform look for whatever show you happen to be working on. Okay, now we've covered a lot of ground in this tutorial, and to wrap things up with the title tool in part three, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at creating some very cool transparency looks with our titles. We're going to look at also how to do title scrolls so you can create some end credits as well as title crawls across the bottom in case you need to create those sort of, you know, emergency broadcast system warnings or any type of crawl you might want to have go across the bottom of your screen. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.